like you don't have to put on or try to be somebody else or whatever you think I may like or whatever somebody else may like. Just be your authentic self. And it, it's a word. And I was like, let me hurry up and get out of this stove. I'll just bitch get arrested naked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, girl, it's not that serious. I like, had it swim by myself. Um, no? you are? Hmm. I'm sorry now. You are? Huh? I thought you didn't know how to swim. Mm. <laughs> oh. no, I said I'm not. I, it, uh, I, I know how to swim for my own benefit. I think I'm in quicksand and I'm like, Daddy, I love you, bro. I don't want to see these clothes. I don't want to go yet. I don't want to go yet. I think people try to kind of be what they think you need and it's not really that or try to operate in a space exactly. that and feel like they're being an ally but they're not really being an ally because I always I tell people this all the time it's like at work especially when you're a new person at work I, I wish we could be a bit more unified in some of our approaches to how we um, try to address inequalities or, or uh, uh, negativity that's directed towards the community <laughs>
can see now they are more cast members. However, we have the three fellas here today, um, but we'll be doing more of a rotating cast. And so you'll see um, women that see us all at one time, but you'll see uh, a different combination of each personality and, and energies and stuff like that. And so we can see just a, just get a different different aspect of the show, a different, um, I don't know what you call it, different look. <laughs> and then um, you'll see various little segments throughout. Throughout, um, Everybody has their own segment. And so we will see, um, just see, you know, what I guess everybody's specialty, so to speak, um, and or passion, however you want to look at it. Um, but yeah, everyone have a segment. So we'll see those throughout the season as well. And then um, we'll also do some conversations. Uh, so I'll, you know, I'll be doing sit down with each cast or co-host um, individually, and just doing like a one-on-one interview. Um, so a lot of a lot of different things. Uh, excited about season two, um, and just excited about off topic. So, all right, with all all that said and done, let's get into our first clip. They've each had their stumbles out of the gate sometimes, and other times they have been criticized because they don't seem quite black enough, whatever that means, you know. And what they all have in common, though, is this idea that they could be making a lot of money in private, the private sector, but instead they're serving, they're, they're choosing public service, and they're choosing it, defining it the way they define it. They're not, you know, sitting in at lunch counters, they're not marching in civil rights protests, but they're changing the world. And, and do you find, as uh, on the national level, that uh, that has been infectious? It has spread and, and energized other people. Do you find that also in local races, uh, governor's Absolutely. offices and the state senators? Absolutely. Yeah. You find, I, I, there's a great district attorney in San Francisco whose name is Kamala Harris. She's, she's brilliant, she's smart, she doesn't look anything like anybody you ever see on Law & Order, yet she's tough and she's got a big future, and they call her the female Barack Obama. I mean, people aren't very imaginative about these things anymore. <laughs> So before we get into discussing the clip, if you guys didn't recognize the name, um, that is our producer's aunt. Okay, so, I, saw, I saw the last name and yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, you can see, kind of see the resemblance um, when you look at her and look at him. But yeah, so that's his aunt, um, Gwen Eiffel. So what do y'all think about what she had to say? I distinctly remember hearing about Kamala Harris years ago. Like this is definitely not new. So they were definitely talking about it a long time ago. She was she was definitely onto something. I, 16 years ago, I'm trying to think. It would have been 2008. Yeah, that it was probably before I heard about it. But yeah, she, they've been talking about her for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to say it goes to speak to like her character and the type of person that she presents as, you know, as, as for as much as people are talking about how they don't know who Kamala Harris is and they don't know her record in terms of what she's done. Clearly, like she's been being talked about. So I think it's important for people to do their due diligence and really just finding out about her background. I think it should that that would prompt a lot of people. I feel like that could, you know, kind of if they don't feel like they know enough about her, I mean, that right there should tell them that there's a lot to still be uncovered if they haven't done so. I would definitely agree with you on that, Hayward. And I think, to, you know, as the kids say, that's a lazy read when they say they don't know about her and, and you know, they want to see more for her or more about her. You know, I guess if you really take the time to kind of do your research, you would know more about her. That's, um, and even in her more more recent interviews and such like that, or just uh, her rallies and stuff like that, I think she's doing a great job of, of displaying her personality. Yeah. Um, and everything like that. I think that some of us are not willing to see it, though, and that's the issue. Because mm -hmm. um, you know, she was on that recent town hall that she did with Oprah. Yeah. You know, if if any, if there was a uh, another if, uh, better glimpse of who she was was when she made that comment. If you come in my house, you get yeah. shot. You know, if you break in my house, man, I don't say come in my house. If you break yeah. in my house, <laughs> you get shot. I mean, and then she, you know, she kind of backtracked. She said it probably should have said that and everything like that. But I think she should have said it because it definitely made her more relatable. Definitely made her more uh, humanistic for those who have been, you know, giving that critique about her. Um, because that's, I think, that's how majority of those who own guns and have those for protection in their homes feel. Like if you come right. up in here, listen, this is the repercussions of it. So um, I think that you know, that's. You know, a lot of people are just using anything or whatever they can to kind of critique critique her or criticize her and everything like that. But I think she's been doing a great job of showing who she is. Um, you just have to open your eyes and be able to, to take note of what she's showing us. 
I agree. And like you said, a lot of people are just coming behind her and trying to pick and find any little thing to talk about or say, because I think even in that uh, space, I feel like a lot of people are saying that she's kind of like pandering for like black votes and stuff by saying that, you know, she has a gun or somebody, someone breaks into her home and she'll shoot them, like kind of like insinuating that she really wouldn't do that or she's just trying to look a certain way. But it's like, just try to like take it for face value. It's it's so unfortunate that people just want to pick apart every little thing and find something wrong with her. That's very true. No, absolutely. I think, you know, trying to find like, there's a lot of middle ground people that, you know, center line that own guns, for example, that are hearing people on the left say, you know, let's ban guns and they aren't quite resonating with that. But then to hear her say that is absolutely, you know, that's absolutely important to connect with those types of people for sure. Definitely. Definitely. I definitely agree with both of you guys. So let's get into our next clip. Which one do you think is more selfish? Like selfish? Probably her. Kamala Harris? Yeah, because girls are, um, a little bit dramatic sometimes. And do you think that people in the United States are ready to have another four years of Donald Trump if he's reelected? No. How much do you like Donald Trump using that scale? Oh, uh, probably, uh, Donald Trump probably hates me for doing this, so, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you really don't like Donald Trump? I mean, come on, he went to, like, jail, I mean... Which one of these two candidates do you think is more likely to do bad things? Oh, convicted felon against the liar. Oh, I'm going back. Let's say Trump because he's a convicted felon. Do you think it's okay for somebody who is a convicted felon to become president of the United States? Yes. Hmm. All right. What do y'all think about that? <laughs> it's sad that we're here and <laughs> just in our government voting process because the fact remains that there would be no time at any point in our lives or even before then that a convicted felon would even be considered for the presidency so the fact that we're having this conversation or having to have this conversation of like reasonings as to why he should be able to be a candidate is really mind-blowing to me personally my big takeaway from that was why is why are we talking with children about this which don't get me wrong there's some value in seeing like you know how far down or how you know into their family life is is politics they've clearly heard something about these people that their their parents are voting for but that doesn't seem particularly newsworthy to me like why are we wasting our time with this when we could be talking about serious things like you know actual issues that matter versus what children think about political candidates mm -hmm. Uh, I, I agree with what you're saying, Brian, but I also see the other aspect of it. Um, I think that it's when you look past the, the, the topic or what have you or the, that, what I gathered from it was the fact that um, it's kind of the teachings that these kids have been taught because of For sure. they, you know, children are you know, innocent and then, you know, we kind of feed, feed them. Um, or feed their thoughts and influence them and stuff like that. And that's how, that's what shapes their ideas. And so I think this is a prime example of just that, you know, because a lot of cases, I'm sure they were just regurgitating what they have heard. Right, absolutely. Uh, from their family. It kind of makes me think back to like the initial part of this clip was, I don't know what year it is specifically, but back in the day when they had that study or they did that, uh, yeah, did a study and they had like kids, I think it was little girls, I'm not sure. But they had like you know the, the white doll and the black doll, and they had them to decide yeah. on which I think was what was prettier, um, prettier think, stuff like that. Yeah. So that kind of gave me that when they just put the pictures of the, the two candidates out and then had the, the kids you know choose based off basically just solely off appearance. Um, and it kind of shows you know like the little girl she was going off of her opinion of women. Yep. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. So not so much whether she was, whether it was the issues, you know, that some of us are paying attention to. She was solely going off of her own instinct of what yep. women represent and stuff like that. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I agree. Part of it. Yes. Yeah. But I get it. And to your point, I understand what you're saying about, you know, there are bigger issues and bigger fish to fries, they would say, you mm -hmm. know, why are we, you know, not so much wasting our time, but why are we going to kids to get our political uh, fix? Um, but I think it would, to me, it went just a little deeper than just uh, the political aspect of it and just uh, how they are being influenced by what they hear 
um, because that, well, let's be realistic, the 10, 11 year olds, they're not going to the polls. Um, so sure. you know, their opinions, honestly, their opinions don't matter, but it's not going to impact the election of this year. Right. right. I think it was important for them to show like at a base level, when you strip everything away, like how do we, how do, how are they seen just by people in general? You know, like I get, like you, like you said with Brian's point, of course, children don't have a determined deciding factor in this, but it's, you know, it's always good to just see like, okay, like for the things that we're talking about, you know, insults being thrown on either side, like how do, what do they look like if it's just solely based on looks or, you know, people who are unbiased can, you know, have an opinion on it. What does that look like? For sure. Yeah. And I think one other part that stood out to me is like, is the fact that, that they were, I think the little boy was saying, he made the comment, you know, about not liking Donald Trump or whatever, given that, and then said, he's probably not going to like this. Well, how did you know, how do you know that? Where is that coming from? That you would, think, you know, be able to say he's probably not going to like this, you know, that type of thing. So um, it just goes really, like I said, back to my original point that the influence that we have on kids and their thought process and their thinking, though know, they come with their own line of thinking but we definitely have a, a, an impact on on uh, as shaping their their mindset and stuff going forward so cool. Cool. cool all right let's get into our final clip i just hired a local counsel in california mm -hmm. we will be filing that lawsuit within the week um i also was just recently contacted by someone who wanted me to essentially represent them in the sale of one of the diddy tapes so, um, which I declined that because... Uh, Wait a that, minute, say that again. Say that again, back up. Uh, you're saying that there's tapes and they're being shopped? Yes, there have been people already shopping. We've heard about the tapes, but yes. the, the, the shopping thing is... Yes, new. there already have been tapes uh, leaking around Hollywood, being shopped around to individuals in Hollywood. But one particular person contacted me to shop a particular video they were in possession of and to contact the person who was in the video to see if they were interested in purchasing the video before it became a public knowledge. Uh, I've heard this before, so like a catch and kill. Catch and kill, correct. Wow, can you, and I guess you can't reveal the person who is on No, I tape. can't explain who the person was, but Mr. High profile? Combs, Mr. Combs was in the tape, and this other person is, I would venture to say, more high profile than Mr. Combs. Really? Really? And you've seen it? Or I've you seen steals of the video. Okay. Um, I so you can verify it, it, I, I, that it exists, that it's real, that the other person in the video is very visible. It's no question if it's that person in the video. And I can tell the video is pornographic in nature. <clears throat> All right. Well, you know, the Diddy thing is definitely trending right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like every day, every week, there is more and more to this story. Um, and I think it's got a lot of people running scared. Uh, a lot of people in the industry running scared right now. They are. Not knowing, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not knowing what's on these tapes, who's on these tapes, where are the tapes, if they're tapes, you know, all this type of stuff, who's going to talk, what's they're going to say. So a lot of people are probably now trying to trying to do a little damage control to figure out, you know, how they can save face and save their name. Because think about it, this is what 20, 20 some years of, of footage, <laughs> you know. Wow. So so what not so much just about the clip, but what do y'all think about this whole Diddy situation? I will leave this to you guys. I'm I'm definitely not really a pop culture person, so I don't know that I have a whole lot to contribute here. Uh, I will say one thing that I this a lot of this plays into kind of this base urge that it seem uh, seems a lot of people have to want to believe the dumbest conspiracy theories you can imagine. Uh, so, like, there's definitely things that I'm hearing about this situation that don't even sound factual. I'm not saying that they aren't but they just seem very far-fetched. And I think there's this desire that people have, and I don't entirely understand why to believe it, just because it it satisfies some urge in them to believe really ridiculous things. So what is something that you heard recently that you would say? Yeah. <laughs> like, one thing that I, um, I'm trying to think of who it was, people deleting their entire Twitter histories. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, You're in pink. I don't, yeah, okay, yeah, pink is a good one. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily understand the connection there. Like, 
if if there wasn't anything incriminating on there, or if, if we hadn't seen anything incriminating on there so far, what were they deleting? Like, I don't I don't entirely understand why that plays into it. Why people automatically assume that that is part of it. But I think if it feels like maybe if things came out like as because as Mario was saying, like things come out every day, every you know whatever. So if if no one is thinking ink was even associated in any form or fashion until this one blurb came out, then of course people are going to then comb through her Twitter feed and so like changing the context yeah, of something she posted. Exactly. Gotcha. So I can okay. I can see the reason for someone wanting to do that, but you know it again it doesn't help the case when things like that happen because it looks very suspicious. Um, I know Usher's came back, but I think hers were still gone. I think the, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah. And the thing, uh, and as it relates to Usher, I know he had released some kind of statement saying that because it was that it, his they went away and they came back, and he was saying that his account was hacked, and you know people kind yeah. of clean up, settle down. It's not what you think it is, type of right. situation. Yeah. So I think it was his way of playing damage control. Now I don't know what her hers is, you know, as it relates to could it be something similar? But I um, I agree. I think, but at, at this point, anything that people can link to this. Um, or people they can link to this, they're going to do that just for, just to sensationalize it. And then a lot of people, that's how they're going to make their money and make their living is by creating a narrative based off of this story, clickbait, what have you, um, yeah. going forward. I think myself personally that um, uh, a lot of that here, I believe, as it relates to the root of it. Um, the root of some of the things that took place, I believe that. However, I don't necessarily know wholeheartedly if I believe if some people were, if everybody involved was against their will. And I'm not, I don't even know if that even came out that it's against their will, but I don't believe that everybody was a victim. Maybe I should say that. Right. Um, I think that um, some may now say that, you know, use that victim card as it relates because it's a hot topic and now you can get that attention and stuff like that. But I don't believe everybody was a victim. Everybody involved was a victim, um, but I do believe this stuff was was going on, and um, I, and I think also for those who people are running scared right now, I, I think the best you know, if you ain't got nothing to be worried about, then you know what I'm saying, just play it cool. I think that's always the biggest thing, and it's hard because, like you said, granted, like Diddy used to have these parties, they were huge, right? Now, of course, there were huge celebrities there, high profile, like they said. Now, I do feel there's also the possibility of like people having been there, but then they're completely innocent. Like they were literally there for the party, but not yeah. whatever shenanigans ensued maybe after or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of, I feel like it's going to be different. But although in that case, I feel like it wouldn't be hard for them to separate themselves and to your, like if you have nothing to hide or, you know, you weren't doing anything illegal or questionable, then there shouldn't be any running or you know whatever yeah and i think that the media wants to rake them up the coals because just anybody that you, if you ever went to yeah. a dinner party they want to rake up the coals and, and make you out to be this this bad person mm -hmm. you, i mean he was yeah. the hottest ticket for mm -hmm. so many years so you wanted to go to those parties because that was the place to be you know what i'm saying so now you want to make the people you know feel bad or convict them because they went no that was that's where you should have been that was the hottest ticket in town yeah. at the time you know and then you knew when to leave and say hey okay let me all right, then grab my pocketbook. It's time for me to go. Or if, or if you chose to stay, you already knew what was going on. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's just unfortunate how people are being victimized. Those who really are, I would feel like, are innocent are being victimized just for being affiliated with him. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they were doing anything wrong. Yeah. So I don't know. True. We'll continue to see how this unfolds, though, because I'm, I'm sure this week there will be some more news and such. More, yes. um, yeah, but we'll see how it, how it continues to unfold um, and go from there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll shift topics a little bit here and just kind of get into a little bit of discussion. I have a question for you, gentlemen. What is something that matters way less than you thought it would? You all thought of something really good when you sent this over last night, and now I was in the middle of working and I don't remember what it was that I thought of. <laughs> well, while you guys ponder it, I will give my answer. Um, something that I thought that why it matters way less than I thought it would is the opinions of others 
as it relates to success. Um, I think for me, for a great amount of my life is I felt like the, the definition of success based on what others see was important for, you know, for so long. And as I'm growing, I'm realizing that that is not the case. You know, um, my definition of success matters more than what others, um, others see and their opinion of it. I can definitely see that. Um, and I actually had a similar uh, kind of take on that because mine was just thinking like being of a certain age doesn't mean anything like you know, as I'm here, like being 42 is just kind of like, oh, like at this point, you're supposed to, you know, have a full family or, you know, you're supposed to be at X point in your career. So it's kind of like, I think obviously, and I, I feel like I've learned that over the course of being an adult, but really more so in the last, I'll say like five years or so, it's just kind of like, none of this really matters because you can do whatever it is that you decide to do at any point in your life. And you're only hindered by your, like own oftentimes by your own like limitations you know or whether that be more so mentally <laughs> than oh, yeah. physically unless you have like you know some sort of like physical ailment but outside of that i feel like you know you can surpass like whatever it is that you want to do you put your mind to it and i really feel like that in just coming into like my whole project management space as well because that was something that i mulled over for a long time just not feeling like, you know, I've, I've lost so much time and now I can't do this, but I have like so many, many years ahead to to make something of it. So I'm seeing it in a different light now. So would you say that that your your recent uh, change has rejuvenated you to a certain degree? Yeah, like honestly, I think it has played a role in just how I feel like overall and not recognizing that it was something that was kind of like weighing heavily on me. You know, it's, it's something that I thought about, but didn't really like give it that much credit to say that it was affecting me as much as it was. But so like to be in this space, just kind of like, oh, like, you know, I got a new light bulb and, you know, everything is a little brighter. So it's, it, I think that has played a, a huge part in like just how I feel. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, That's absolutely. Good. When you're no longer kind of working towards the expectation of others, mm -hmm. you're exactly. working on your own. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I do remember what mine was. Uh, kind of where I was struggling was trying to figure out how to communicate it properly. Uh, one piece of life advice that I always give people is don't trust your gut as much as people tell you to, oh. because your gut can be wrong. Um, and, and not necessarily in, like there's a lot of situ situations where I wouldn't say that that applies. But the example that I came up with when I was thinking about it was the new intro that you rolled at the beginning of this. Um, I, I hope you don't mind that I say that I, I created that. Oh yeah, I was and, gonna touch base on that at the end, yes, but go ahead. But I hate it. Like I, when I watch it, I, I hate it. And I, I know that people enjoy it. Multiple people have seen it. They were like, that's really good. And I still look at it and say, no, nope, that sucks. And so sometimes that internal voice that, that is critical of yourself, like, mm -hmm. it, but it, not, not just internal, but you know, how you interpret things around you. Sometimes your inner voice is wrong for a variety of reasons. And yeah. you need to be able to recognize when your internal voice may be wrong and be able to, you know, ask a little bit more questions think about it a little bit more deeply instead of just rash decisions that say, you know, well, my gut says this, so this is true. Yeah, that's very true. I like that. Cause yeah. I think oftentimes we don't think about it like our gut being wrong in that respect. Cause it's kind of like, okay, trust that like this is good. If other people are telling you that it's good and you're just like, eh, no, that's whack. And you know, it's like that criticality of yourself is oftentimes yeah. like the catalyst and you maybe like messing up a good thing potentially or you know whatever the case may be so right yeah I mean, and, and i guess it goes to your to your point of the saying of you know we're more critical of ourselves than um others are and we don't see always see ourselves we see ourselves differently than others see ourselves so yeah i you know i personally like it um but you know what what, what part of don't you like brian I, that's the, the, there's nothing about there's no logical reason that I dislike it. I mean, no, no, I, you didn't say dislike. You said you hate it. So. <laughs> yeah. 
whatever word you want to use. I mean, whether uh, there's no logical reason to hate it. Uh, there's nothing necessarily. Sp there's nothing specific that I hate about it. There's. It's just. It's a. I don't necessarily consider myself a particularly creative person. Um, in fact, it's one of my. I would describe as a flaw of mine that, that I. I really struggle with original creativity. Like, so in. You know, I, I'm fairly skilled in Photoshop and video editing stuff and things of that nature, but a lot of it is copying things that I've seen or modifying things that I've seen to, you know, do something new. But just original creativity is something that I, I feel like I struggle with. But again, maybe I shouldn't listen to my internal dialogue because, you know, the, sometimes people around me say something completely different than what I believe about my own work. So, yeah. And I would have to step in and say that I, I would say this probably would be an example of when you shouldn't listen to your gut because, um, and who's to say that just because you're not organically um, creative, meaning like coming up with this all, you know, these things all on your own, and you may, you know, as they, as um, Reggie always says, and I'm a Beyonce that, you know, maybe you do a little Beyonce in here and there and taking this and making it your own. But that's sometimes if you think about it, that's what a lot of people do. They take they see yeah. something and, and take it as their own, even like um, as you know, make, make it about me. But, you know, even like in cooking or something like that, you know, I may take a recipe that I may gather from somebody else yeah. and make it my own by adding my own flair to it or something like that. But <laughs> but I'm just saying, so I, I don't think it makes it, I don't think it should be looked at as a negative just because you may not organically sure. be that creative person, but because, and we'll see some of the things that you've been doing, um, you did, you know, the logo that you did for, for us, Oliver made me love it. You know, I love the opening. Um, I think it captures um, the gist of the, of the show. Um, and I, I, so I think you need probably in these cases, not that you're looking for it, but just give yourself yeah. a little bit more credit because um, it's, it's some of the, the little intros and stuff like that that we have going going forward. You did your thing. So, um, and it may not have been, you know, and I, yeah, a couple of ones you had to go back over and say, wow, I'm not really comfortable with them, stuff like that. But um, I think that that you are probably the prime example of, of what you're saying. Don't trust your Yeah, your absolutely. Um, not that it's wrong, but you know, course there's always that 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 everybody else but others can see us differently than we see ourselves so absolutely well thank you I, I very much appreciate that thank you oh yeah 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 yeah. were you saying something slick when i was saying something about i'm making it by myself hayward oh <laughs> no i was not <laughs> oh, okay okay Just no. <clears throat> oh, I was going to add something on there. Not about you. I was going to say Apple has become, you know, a multi-trillion dollar company by taking other people's ideas and yeah. you know, mixing them up just a little bit. So, you know, clearly we can, it can be a successful strategy. Let's put it that way. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So ain't nothing wrong with it. So let's shift the gears because I mean, as we're looking at about, you know, talking about um, something that you thought would, would matter way less than you, you uh, originally thought it would. That also opens up for a little bit of vulnerability. And um, a lot of times as men, we, some may say we struggle with that aspect of uh, emotion. So if that is emotion, you have vulnerability, vulnerability. So we, we struggle with that that emotion. Um, how do you guys view vulnerability? And um, is it difficult for you to be vulnerable? Vulnerability is kind of an odd, like an opposite of a bell curve for me, like with strangers and people that I know very well, I could e very easily be vulnerable, but there's a whole group in the middle where I really struggle, like whether that is how they've reacted to my vulnerability in the past, or um, maybe I don't have the level of um, interaction with them that I'd like to have to be, to know, understand exactly how they're going to react to me being vulnerable. I'm definitely, it, it's, like I said, a complete stranger, I can be pretty vulnerable with a complete stranger because there's also a very good possibility that I'll never see them again or whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, people that I know, but I, you know, don't know great, I do actually struggle with vulnerability there. Got you. You know, I think you were kind of uh, still, in a, still, still in my nose, Brian, because that's exactly what was my answer to that is that I don't have an issue with being vulnerable to those who I don't know. It is those that I do know that I take concern with being vulnerable. And it's not because, it's, I think it's because of maybe um, the personal aspect of it. Um, it's not so much being judged, but it's just about what are you going to do with this information that I've given you? Or what are you gonna do with me being so open to um, to, to, you, to you in those moments? Um, you know, somebody stranger to your point, I'll never see you again. But 
uh, for those that you may encounter more and more, it's like, well, uh, so I'm always on the guard, unfortunately, like for people that I'm closer to, because I'm like feeling like, well, what do you, what is going to happen? What's going to, re- what's your end game? Why, you know, that type of thing. I can I can relate to both <clears throat> to both of you guys' responses. So I I'm similar. Like for strangers, I can talk to, and I don't have a problem sharing or opening up at all. Um, I've recognized just in getting older that I I do take not issue with vulnerability, but I think I rec- like I think about it a little bit more a little bit more in depth. Like to the I think on the side of like worrying about if this person can like handle the vulnerability kind of like you were saying what you were saying mario but also like how will you will you actually be of any sort of like benefit will you help me through like in being in that vulnerable space like will you just kind of like how will you react to it? how will you deal with it like will you not what will you do with it but like will you be able to kind of like work with me through it if i'm having this vulnerable moment or will it be just completely foreign to you so it's kind of like i think just having that fear that maybe that very close person to you won't be able to like help you through a situation. And then it's kind of like, you have to rethink like your connection almost with that person. Like, I think it's like, I have a part of that, like in being, having a fear of vulnerability, so. Yeah, I I, I fully understand that. Definitely understand that. And that's why it makes it so much easier. And it sounds so backwards, you know, to be able to be vulnerable with a complete stranger. Yeah. Um, than it is the people in your circle. Um, it's because you don't, because you don't, they don't owe anything to you. So it's like you don't have any expectation of them. So it's kind of like right. I can share whatever with you, and you know, whatever you give, you give, and you know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I definitely, uh, that is definitely a struggle for me to just, mm-hmm. just, just. Uh, I just say, so you both kind of said the same thing. I, if I understood correctly, I just want to make sure that I did that you have a fear of how people will use that information, could use that information against you. Yeah. Yeah. I think Mario does. For me, it's like not how they would use it against me, but just like, will they be able to support me in it or support me through it? If that makes sense. Got it. Okay. If they can actually, if they have the necessary tools to be able to like work with me through it or, you know, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah, and it's twofold for me. It is, it, it is the fact that what are you gonna do with this information? And it's also a little bit of what, what you said too, Hayward. It was like, do you have the tools? Um, because, um, you know, when you're vulnerable, I mean, I guess I'm, when you are vulnerable, I, don't, I would like to think there's no expectation there. However, uh, there's like the unwritten expectation of what it, what is gonna become of this. Right. And, and, um, and it could be life experiences as well that kind of, allow you to but that shapes you or your behaviors and such and so you're feeling like you know maybe some past experiences may have led you to when you're in your vulnerable moments people didn't receive it well or they you know didn't do what you thought they were going to do so now for me speak for me that's shaped how i move going forward um because i always feel like everybody has an angle that's unfortunate but i just feel like everybody has an angle um and so it's um it's probably been um I don't know, Achilles heel for me in that type of thinking is thinking that everybody has an angle and everything like that. And so that's kept me from being vulnerable or in the, in the moments that I have, like um, even like apologizing. I apolog- I issued an apology this week to a, uh, a, a friend of mine. And um, so I issued an apology to them and I did it via text. I was about to say, did your publicist send it? Is that- <laughs> <laughs> but I am, I, it's important for me in this season of my life to do things when they pop up for me. So when it came in my head, I felt I needed to do it in that moment. Um, I sent it, sent the text, received nothing, nothing back. And so for me, I would cringe because I'm like, uh, I've been, I'm vulnerable. I'm, you know, stepping out here. I, you know, I don't have a problem with say, saying I'm sorry, but I'd be like, Ugh. you know, it's just, it's just an uncomfortable space. And so I heard nothing. And then the next day they responded, but said nothing about that. Oh. And I was like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> so now it's got me questioning. And so what I'm saying, like, what are you going to do with this information? It's got me questioning now, like, oh, should I have done that? You know, so did they, 
they okay so they were they responded but it was to something totally separate but was it like had you said something else and they responded oh, to it? They oh, just, oh. No, that was that's what that was that's what made it that much more i was yeah. like you responded you, you said nothing, back up, no. but you didn't acknowledge so was it a was it a state of like so i know you issued an apology so was it like had a conversation been had prior about the situation did you know like the person was upset or like what did you like like set the scene like what it's a process it was a process and right. i think in my mind um it was a situation uh, it is a situation of they probably may have felt like they have been putting forth effort or putting forth at the center third and i was not in the space um and so um now that i'm thinking some things through and looking at things from a different lens. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, Mario, you tripping, yada, yada, this, let's make this right. Um, when I say make this right, it's not that I was doing it, I did anything. <laughs> I, no, because I, I have to say that because it wasn't, it wasn't in this situation, it wasn't, I can, I've, Brian knows I've had some situations where you can be like, damn, that motherfucker is crazy. But no, in this situation, I hadn't, I didn't, I hadn't done anything wrong. It was just, a, just, uh, a culmination of some things. And so it was over. So your apology came just kind of like after you thinking about it. It wasn't like a situation had just happened. And no, then, no, 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 no. Okay. okay. Uh, That's what I was so, saying. and they hadn't like not spoken to you for a while because of anything that had happened. No, no, right. no. We've been, we've okay. Been, we've been talking or communicating and stuff like that. And our communication is not what it once was, but it, it then, it, you know, and I have to realize that I, in, it, in my, realization I was like you know I really miss very so many aspects of what we had and so that's what led me to say you know listen I'm my, I'm sorry and I and I made sure that I didn't give the give, did not give the apology that so many people do give I apologize if I made you no I put listen I apologize for x y and z right that's what I'm saying not if right. I did no, I, no I, I hit it on all the cylinders I apologize for this this that and the third yeah. um because it bothers me when somebody says, well, I apologize if I made you, I apologize if I did this. So That's I was very apology. specific, you know, on my apology. And then nothing, nothing crickets. And so me being who I am on the planet, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I even hit up my, my, my confidant, uh, <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> I was like, bitch, can you believe? <laughs> but no. Uh, <laughs> but no. Um, but I in talking it through with him was like I was I was talking it through to him with him, but also talking it through myself. And I was like, you know what? It doesn't change the fact that I've done what I wanted to do and what what led what I was led to right. do. So it is what it is. But still, I think it was probably more so my ego kind of like, oh. And I was like, you know, I say, oh, not a ball in your court. You think you're gonna run me? This and that third. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 you know what I'm saying? That's that's the kind of stuff that goes through my head. I'm like, uh -uh. you know what I'm saying? Now you got now you 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 the, you in the lead. Now I gotta be, you know, second second fiddle to you. No, no, I'm not gonna do this. But I have to think back, pull back from that, and say, listen, you know what, Mario, you did it. You felt it that you wanted to do it. You did it, and so at the end, of, if, if nothing else comes from it you can still rest um, on that. And so as a result of that, so the next day when I said I, they responded with touch, you know, touch no basis of that, I said, oh, okay. So me being who I am on the planet, I called them. Listen, sweetie, we're not gonna do this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're not gonna do this. I called them um, and we were able to have a conversation. Of course, I had to bring it up because they, I can see they weren't gonna bring it up. And I was like, but I didn't bring it up like, Hey, you didn't respond to my text, but but hear but hear me right because I don't think that I don't think it's wholly fair because just because you got to a space that you were able to issue that apology, I don't think it's fair for you to then like strong dictate strong how them to yeah to make them respond right away just because you want them to and you because you need that and you don't know where they are in the realm of whatever to even be able to respond to that. Now, sure, they could have acknowledged true, that it was sent, but you can't true. force them to then have that conversation. And get true, 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 true. But I know this person pretty well. So I know how they move, and so I mean, I get it. Are you saying, are you saying that people can't grow? Because no, 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 
And no, no, I'm not disputing what you're saying, Sunshine. And I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. And you, what you make is a very good point. But all I'm saying is because I know people, I you know, and I know this person very well. It 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 became a situation of when it's like, it was like, well, I was making this effort and you are receptive, so now you want to make an effort and I'm gonna I'm not gonna make a receptive. Like, like it was a tip, you know? Because even prior to that, our conversation was very much so like you may hit them up. Oh, you know. I was thought about you today. Y'all just said it there. Oh, yeah, yeah, It was all, but then the mission, minute I offered this apology, boom, it was like, got your ass. You know what I'm saying? It's situation. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh, you make up these scenarios in your mind. <laughs> really, my mind be working. It, it, it's to the detriment of myself in many cases. But um, but yeah, and so we ended up talking. Um, and, and <laughs> the conversation ended up going, okay. You know what I'm saying? This at a third, but I, and I left the conversation realizing I, I understood what they were where they were coming from, not fully understand, not thinking they fully understand where I was coming from, which is fine. Um, so then, you talked about you specifically about the apology or the the topic that the apology was in regards to. <laughs> That's what your conversation when the phone was about. No, no, no. I, you know. Oh, okay. So you just talked randomly. I didn't go in for the kill. You know, we talked about other okay. things. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. Okay. And That's then, cool. and then I didn't say I didn't. Frame it in the fact of listen, bitch. I know you did. I know that you didn't. Um, you didn't respond to my my text or anything like that. I refrained. I I went at that at a different way, and I said, listen, I you know I sent that text to you. It was on the top of my mind at that moment at this that time, and I sent it to you because I wanted to do things in the moment. However, I think I need to verbally express how I'm feeling uh, so that you have a better understanding of that and this that, and that. And so that's how I went about it. And that's how the conversation. Um, in the midst of our other conversations, that's how that took place. And so um, going from there, we had discussion. And so that's in that moment, that's and that's essentially how this topic vulnerability came about because they expressed, they was like, you know, Mario, you know, I know it's difficult for you to be vulnerable. And um, and it, it, that was very true. I, I And that brought me to my point is like, I don't have an issue being vulnerable to people I don't know, but those I do know for reasons such as this, I'm like, okay. And that's all, and I'm always on guard thinking like, what are you gonna do with this? If I'm vulnerable to you, what are you gonna do with this information? Um, so that's that's how this, this whole topic came about. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what you got to say Brian? do you do you think that uh, them texting you how many days was it like was it the next day was it a couple days later the next day the next day do you think that strategic you apology yes. i was just no i was gonna say more like maybe your apology actually resonated with this person and that allowed them to feel comfortable texting you the next day like you know what? I feel better. We can, you know, have a, a go back to one of our normal conversations that we used to have. Probably could be, possibly, maybe. Okay. I don't know. However, um, no, they just think the person is being strategic and making him sit and feel whatever. So no, he. Okay. Listen, I do. I always. <laughs> that's my. I'll be honest. With you, my mind goes there first. I'm always thinking that somebody. I always feel like somebody's always waiting to have the one up on you, and I hate that. I hate. You know what? It. Sometimes. We don't need to trust our gut. That is, <laughs> <laughs> that is very true, very true. But that is, that's probably my biggest thing. And I'm like, I always feel like I, I always sure. have a one up on you, and I hate feeling like somebody has a one up on me. I hate it. But what I'm, what I gather from this, because I feel like it was a lesson in this for me, and I felt like, listen, Demario, do what you are led to do, regardless if it doesn't right. end up how you wanted it to. You so, apologize because apologizing was appropriate and and important. So that exactly. That, Exactly. That's exactly. full stop. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll you know I'll, I'll rest in that and and let that be what it is, and I'll keep you posted on the progress of this this growth journey I'm on. Thank you for sharing that with us. I yes. know that was Thank vulnerable you. Thank for you. you. Being vulnerable. Yes. yes I, you know I try. Yeah. I try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I try. All right. So we're gonna move into something else called finish the sentence. So I'm gonna start a sentence and allow you to finish it. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Let's do it. Are we doing <laughs> particular person or how are we doing no, this? Both of you, both of you, for both of you. Gentlemen. Okay. All right, so the first one is, if I won the lottery today, I would... Not let anyone know. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> I would change my phone number. <laughs> I see that's suspicious. I think that's just like I, no. I get I get why you would say that, but I don't know that I would do that. I mean, I would change everything it, but, normal. You know, I would let. I get it. another phone number, but that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Why would you I, change your number? Why would I change it? Just in the event of people then beginning to call, like the the strays and people you haven't heard from in years, and all of that to prevent that. And then I could have, you know, with the new number I can provide to the people that I see fit. Need to have it. Yes, on a need yeah. to know basis. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. At my best, I am. Being creative. Hmm. Okay. Ryan? I, at my best. <laughs> Overly critical. At your best, myself. Really <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll go with her. In my alone time, I like to hmm. pray. Okay. I was going to say talk to myself, but I don't necessarily mean that in a literal sense, but like actually like kind of an internal dialogue of, mm -hmm. you know, when there's no noise around you in the world is uh, from the world, like you can actually like listen to your own thoughts and, and process what you, you know, the things that have been going on or with you. So okay. to talk to myself. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 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 If I attended a Diddy freak off today, I would be. Wait, you said if I did if the Diddy freak off what? Today I would be. Today I would be. Ooh. Quiet. Today I would be quiet. Uh, <laughs> if I did the freak off, I'd be quiet. Listen, I don't want nobody to know it. Listen, you don't, you don't, you I'm telling me. everybody. I, my my story is going to turn into a movie. That's I was going to say I would be. Well, um, I have no I'd shame. Be working on a. I'd be working on a, a suit. <laughs> 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 As long as it was a, as long as I was a uh, willing and participant for the sake of having fun, that's that my my answer stands. <laughs> gotcha. As it relates to this election, what matters to me most is not having Donald Trump. That's that's it. Not going back. That's isn't that the slogan? Similar. Having having a candidate who who is truly for like what the people want as a whole, and not like not self serving. I think for me, it would be the focus on the issues and the and um, understanding that. Things take time to have to take place and change, um, but you're really focusing on what what are the issues. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest fear is disappointing people that love me. That's a similar one for me. That and honestly dying. Okay. 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 Mine is uh, kind of along the lines of yours, Hayward, but not just dying in general. Oh, Mine I is know, yes, I know yours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, in, a, in a in a violent manner. Man, my God, today. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that, is my, that is my biggest fear. But I want everybody to know if it does happen, I fought, I fought to the end. <laughs> that is, that yeah. is my biggest fear. My, is dying a violent death. That is, I don't mm -hmm. know. Too much TV, probably, I guess. Yeah, too much ID channel. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I have a great appreciation for people who mm. for people who are selfless. Okay. I was going to say for people who feel like they have found themselves. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say oftentimes I, I I often joke like I don't know what I want to be when I grow up 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm 43 years old. So, but, and, and there's definitely a, this motivation that feel like I probably should know what I want to do, but I don't. So I'm, I'm envious of people that have that figured out. Yeah. And I think that's a generational thing, though, Brian, not to, you know, it's like For sure. that we have, I mean, I think we all have, may have that share that same thought process of like, yeah. you know, a, I'm, in, I'm at this age, so I should have it all figured out. And what I'm realizing now in life is that for so many, and it's okay to just figure it out as you go and think about it. There's so many great things happening for and people are really hitting their stride later in life. Uh, so got to keep that in mind. And I, but I understand that, that it's very frustrating um, at times to be like, to, you want it now, 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 and you want to be able to figure it out now, now, now. But, you know, there are great, a lot of people actually, me and the producer were having a, a discussion about some similar, very similar prior to us jumping on a date. Um, and so it's just like, think, you know, things happen when they're supposed to happen. Um, and unfortunately, For sure. you know, I, I kind of want to dictate it and, and I want it to happen when I want it to happen. So right. and don't get me wrong. Like, I don't necessarily mean that, like, where I am right now in life is is happy in terms of, you know, career, amount of money that I make and you know, things of that nature. I, I'm fairly satisfied with those things, but I feel like a lot of people have not, not, not everybody, but a lot of people have the course of what's next already figured out. And I, I say, I don't even necessarily think about what's next until I have to at times. Yeah. I, no, I, I completely agree with what you're saying. And I think just to piggyback off that, like I, um, would have to say, like, in, upon meeting P and then being in, introduced to his, his his friend group, like, a lot of the things that they would discuss and talk about was not the things that I was discussing with my friend group. And I felt like, oh, shit, you know, and he, these are young guys. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. mm. you know what I'm saying? And so then it kind of was me like, oh, am I doing something wrong? You know, that type of thing. Right. Um, and then to see how a lot of them are manifesting these things or, or really um, a lot of stuff that they said was going to happen is now starting to happen. Um, it's kind of like, oh, okay, well, then why would me and my friends not talking about shit like that? We talking about everything else. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. And then the final one is I get disappointed when people blank. When people don't acknowledge my apology, you know. <laughs> when people don't come through for me, um, just for simple, simple things. Yeah. 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 I would second that too, Hayward. You know, I, I do get to this point when um when I, people don't show up for me how I would show up for them. Mm -hmm. Um and I was trying to like see if if that was that because I, I understand that people aren't going to show up the same way that you do for them. But it, when it comes to like, I guess in the grand scheme of like, if you had to measure it against like the things that I have shown up for, and I just need you to do like this one little thing, then it's kind of okay. Yeah. You know, what's going on. I was going to say, and this actually ties into but what you both said, and that is, you know, how do I actually word it? Basically that when people fail to uh, when they don't live up to how I see them in my head. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, that's a me problem. That's not a yeah. them problem, but it's still, I still get disappointed when yeah. they don't necessarily live up to the expectations that I have for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for sharing. And so now we will shift into one of our new segments. Um, our segment today is Ronnie's Political Corner. She has a little insight for us as it relates to the upcoming election. Hello, beautiful people. It is Ronnie reporting live from the car. Um, with 38 days left until the election, I want to hit a couple points for you guys. I was going to say five, but I think it might be more than five. Um, so, and if you see me looking down, it's because I have my notes in another phone. So, number one, most important, make sure you are registered to vote. If you are not registered to vote, please go to vote.org, V-O-T-E dot O-R-G, and get registered. It literally takes two minutes. 
make sure that your loved ones and friends are also registered to vote. Number two, you want to check your voters registration if you are already registered to vote. I have been checking mine like once a week. Um, you can also do that at vote.org because there's been some things going on where some people who have been registered voters forever are somehow no longer on the list. So they're having to re-register. So you wanna check that often to make sure that you are on the list and to make sure that you stay on the list. Um, number three, this is important, do your research. Don't listen to who your parents vote for, your friends vote for, you know, co-workers, do your own research on the candidates that are running. Yes, we know about Kamala and Trump, um, obviously for president, those are the two big ones, but the most important candidates are your local ones. So you want to do your research to know who's going to be on the ballot and who's running, um, what their plans are, and see if their plans align with your um, with your morals or things that you want to see. Make sure that their policies go along with that. Um, just I, do your research. That's in, that's important to me. Do your research. Don't listen to anybody else. Go out there and do your own um, for things that are important to you. Things that are important to me are you know education. So the school districts. What's going on in the school districts? you know, public transportation, things of that nature that are local. And those are actually the ones that go to the Capitol that fight for you. So while, of course, we have our presidents, presidents can only do so much. Things have to be passed through Congress. So these are the people, your locals, that you really want to vote for. That's what's very important. Um, and you can also do that at vote, I'm sorry, vote.org. Also at vote.org. Um, you can, it allows you to see who's on the ballot. So say right now you don't know who to look for, like what candidates are running in your, in your town. You can go to vote.org, type in your zip code, and they'll tell you who's running and for, and for what. Um, you can also, if you don't want to go to the polls or you can't go to the polls, you can actually get your absentee ballot, have one mailed to you also from vote.org. Number four. If you can, volunteer at your local polls. You can take phone calls, you can knock on doors, you can be there on um, on the day to vote to you know make sure things are going well, check people in, guide them to where they need to go, even volunteer to get you know the older folks or those that don't drive to the polls. You, you can do that as well. So um, every, every little bit helps, everybody plays a part. So if you're able to do that, that's also great to do as well. Last and most important, no vote is still a vote. So not voting is still a vote. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. I am so sorry that I, you know, this is quick and I was, I'm in the car, but I got kids at a tournament right now. So um, I stepped out to, to do this video for you guys, and I will see you in a couple weeks. Um, again, go to vote.org, V-O-T-E dot O-R-G, for everything you need to know about this election. Have a great day, guys. Yes, thank you, Ronnie, for that political corner moment, or the political moment. Um, so yeah, great information there. Great information, definitely. Uh, Supporting the election, so we definitely want you to getting that information out there about voting and um, and all things that's related to the voting and the, the election of this year. So good information. All right, let's slide into our uplift. You see what I'm saying, Brian? Look at these little tidbits that you come up with. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you really got to give yourself some credit. You know, I think I love them. But, Thank you. I, I, I'm glad. Yes, yes. So today, I don't know who, who said this, but I just saw it and it resonated to me. Um, it simply says, choose you because when you start choosing you, you start attracting everything that is also choosing you. Um, so that is my uplift for this week. Choose you because when you start choosing you, you start attracting everything that is also choosing you. I love that. So, me too. Let that Let that resonate. And anybody else have anything to say before we close out? No. Nope. Happy to kick off season two. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Excited for all the things of season two. 
welcome aboard, Brian. And as he mentioned earlier, he has he's the creator, even though he says he's not creative, he's the creator <laughs> of our new opening um, and our openings for each segment um, and such. So thank you, Brian, for that. I'll give you some okay. more credit than you okay. do. Um, <laughs> so thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the Off Topic Podcast. Again, we want to welcome Mr. Brian, DJ Evox. Um, and we're definitely looking forward to his insight on the topics going forward. Um, uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Instagram, and TikTok platforms. And we will see you soon. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks, you too.